It's simply saying, stop, look, and realize what's going on. The game can only be played as long as all the pieces on the board are moving. Social trust is one of the most important indicators of the strength and quality of nations and societies around the world. It's also associated with many outcomes including happiness and life satisfaction positively and suicide negatively. And it demonstrates time and again that increased ethnic diversity is the strongest cause of a decline in social trust, stability and happiness. Hello, it's December 2023. I want you to go back into your life. Say, for example, when you were a child and everything in the world was new. This is before you started school. And you're learning whatever it is that you're learning from those around you, primarily family. And you're just like a sponge absorbing information. And you didn't even realize it. There can be subtleties of information that is not even accurate. With no fault of anyone, it's just that's just the way the world is. Then you start kindergarten and you start to learn. And because of your parents having that authoritative position, you see other adults having authoritative positions. So you listen to your teachers. Now, it's not to say teachers, for example, are deliberately trying to misinform. There's a difference between misinformation and disinformation. Misinformation is something that is deemed, for example, to be accurate. Whether it is or isn't, the person who may be relating the information accepts it as, for example, factual truth. Disinformation is something deliberate that is inc inaccurate and being promoted as accurate, usually through authoritative positions. Going back to childhood. So then you're you're working, you know, you start your first day of school and then from then on you're working towards a goal. Passing kindergarten. And you're at times having fun with what you're learning and kindergarten is more geared as that transition period from play to work. And then you successfully pass kindergarten. And then you go into grade one. Now you're starting to learn information. And it should be, and it has changed over the many, many years, should be the basics on the alphabet, the words, sentence structures, simple mathematics, perhaps even some simple geography and so forth, and you're absorbing all this information. Again, you're working towards passing grade one. Now, you achieve that, you've passed grade one, now you're to grade two. And now this pattern has been developed in your own mind of having to achieve something. This is your goal, is to achieve something and having a reward for it. Now I'm just going to segue for a moment. A lot of schooling, especially in the higher education, is indoctrination. I'll get to that later. Now, you successfully pass grade two, grade three, grade four, and you move your way up, for example, to junior high school, which would be grade seven and eight. Now this transition period is getting you ready for changing classes more, having different teachers, teaching different topics, different subjects. And again, they're teaching whatever it is that they're told to teach and how to teach it. Each teacher will add their own flair to it, their own character. Some will try to make things more entertaining. Others 
just to the point. And for some people, that's very boring. Now you've gone through junior high, you're entering high school now. And your mission now is that you have to do something, not only by passing the grades, but something with your life that is now being more in the forefront. Because after high school, then comes college, university, and then with the whole idea of, for example, getting a job and eventually, for most people anyway, having a family, a home, and etc. Now, I did mention briefly how the education system has completely sidetracked. There's a lot of information that is being taught today, especially to even prepubescent children, that is misinformation as well as disinformation. During all this time, you're being now exposed to the adult world. So as a young adult teenager, you start to hear, you're more exposed to adults talking about the news, so you're maybe paying some attention to that. Now there are distractions to that with something that are called fads, and that could be with music, clothing, things of that nature. Now, back in the 70s and 80s, for example, these fads were more distinct and there were very few of them. But you were part of one of those categories, for example, with music. Now, you've completed your high school and now you're going into college and university for higher learning. And then from that you have to take electives and usually the electives are a topic or a subject dealing with the liberal arts. You take those as uh, courses that you can take for a semester. You have to choose whether you want to or not. It's mandatory. And it's interesting how liberal arts is mandatory, although you do have a choice. And it's from these liberal arts, for example, liberal arts theoretical pseudosciences. And I always highlight, for example, the liberal arts theoretical pseudoscience of psychology that are a must outside of the topic that you wish to study. And that is life from the time when you're young the time when you enter the world. Now for some people, for example like myself, you enter the world a lot sooner, long before you're prepared. I entered the adult world at 17. I had no one to guide me and I had to learn everything through the school of hard knocks. And perhaps, I know when I was younger, I used to say that that was the best education because it's reality kind of like a baptism by fire it's a hard way to enter the world but nevertheless for a lot of people that's how you enter the adult world young there's a lot of people who don't have to experience that for example they have a good solid family life they stay at home and a lot of these people, they never grow up. They may grow up in some ways, for example, knowing responsibility, but inside they still maintain that as a descriptive childlike innocence. Now, over the years, for example, I've talked about not being consumed by anything on any topic. And I've also been introducing the topic of everything being false in this world. And now all this ties into, for example, the, from the time when you were, for example, a toddler through your education system into your adulthood. Now I'm going to first 
discuss not being consumed. Something, that, again, that I've talked about, even dedicated a few videos discussing this in more in depth. How do you know when you're consumed by something? Well, can be consumed as an addiction. I've mentioned, for example, how a lot of people are addicted to negativity. And they don't even realize it. And it is an addiction. And negativity, whether it be internal or external, they're still addicted to it. A lot of people we see in this world, they thrive on conflict. And for them, their life doesn't seem right without it. And they don't even realize it. And for a lot of these people, it's self-destructive. They self-destruct their own lives or the lives of others in their lives. For example, like family or friends or whomever. How do you know when you're addicted? For example, do you find yourself binge watching or subscribing to channels or groups that keep reiterating the same thing over and over again? It could be something legitimate. For example, you can have someone's video efforts on, on a particular topic that is accurate, truthful, maybe controversial, but there's truth there. But you keep watching because there's an addiction. And then we see sometimes there's conflicts and so forth on, in, um, on certain topics. And it's brought out in uh, channels and people thrive on that because there's an addiction of that conflict. So that's how you know when you're addicted to something is when you have that need and you may not even realize it to keep following a particular topic. And the topic could be positive or negative, but it's still an addiction. And this is important because this addiction leads into, or sorry, it attaches to misinformation and disinformation, everything as a descriptive in this world being fake. So people are addicted to something, anything. And then people start to divide. That's the key here now. We see this, for example, with social justice movements. People will gravitate towards others that have like mind and then see the world through that lens. And the longer that they're a part of it, the harder it is for them to see anything outside of that. Social justice movements have been a huge divide because there's countless of them. And then from this we see, for example, history being rewritten just be before our own eyes today. And this leads into the whole world. What's happening today, for example. How there's a lot of misinformation, disinformation, and this is all part of the agenda. Now I've mentioned even in more recent videos, for example, prophecies what they are. They're not predictions, but rather the layout of agendas. And the people who are controlling everything, for example, in the world, know about these things too, because it's out there. Now, who put it out there and why? That's a whole different topic, and that's not the point here, but they're aware of it as well. So these predictions are agendas. And with agendas, there are what you can call scripts. Now this all ties into from being a toddler, going through the education system, being exposed to the world, misinformation, disinformation, and being consumed. It all ties into with the game of life. We're all actors here. And for those in the know, know the proper answer to that. And I'm not going to get into that right now. But 
look at that at it as, as a game. And everyone's playing their part with this script. They're adhering to some form of social conditioning, some script, some agenda that has been imposed on them. A lot of people talk, for example, about, well, we all have free will. Yes, there is a thing called free will. Free will even applies to those who are programmed with a script in, for example, how they execute their role. There's also a free will for the stronger-minded people. Now we're getting into less and less people who know there's something not right, not right in their own lives, not right in the world. And then we can thin that out to a very small percentage of the people in the world who, for whatever reason, are not adhering to any of the scripts, but also realize what's going on in the world, how everything is false. Now, I just want to be very clear, I'm not being specific to anything, nor am I stating or implying that events are not real. For example, people being harmed through military action, for example. That's all scripted. We can see this on any topic from individuals' everyday lives, how they interact with each other. Even if someone's life is not having a profound impact on the world, they're impacting people around them. Say, for example, with some sort of negativity or resistance or something. And it's like a ripple effect. And we have many pebbles being dropped in the pond, and the pond is just full of these ripples. So kind of picture that as society, civilization overall, the world. We have all these divides. So people are completely divided because of scripts, and that's all part of the game that's at play here. So where am I going with all this? A lot of people are looking for answers. They know something's not right. They're frustrated, even, for example, bitter. It could be anything from false accusations, which is part of a script. Certain people will falsely accuse others because they're programmed to. We see, for example, and I'm just using this as an example, something that a lot of people are much, very much aware of, how police officers can react, interact with the average person, overreacting, taking things beyond insanity. Which, for example, leads to wrongful convictions. And the whole story behind a wrongful conviction to convict someone who's innocent is all part of a script. We can even go to the world stage, to the theater of war. And we see a lot of misinformation, disinformation, false footage being used even from video games and I've mentioned this in recent videos as well. All these things are being scripted and for most people they don't even realize it whether it be again uh, police, the justice system, even politics. And the last example that I used the war machine people who are part of that you really have to ask yourself, whoever's watching in my audience here, why would someone, and I'm just using this as an example, want to learn combat? Why would they want to go into combat? 
you really dig deep, you'll see that it's part of some sort of programming throughout someone's life, whether it be a short period of time or someone older who's had a lot, many years behind them, decades even. So what's the solution? The solution is easier, much easier said than done because most people don't see it. They don't see that they're playing a role. They're part of a script. They've been manipulated, socially conditioned to act and behave in a certain way. And again, yes, the free will part does fit in to a degree. And that's a different tangent. The solution is simple. Again, easier said than done. And it is to go against, for example, whatever is driving you. So say you're part of a social justice movement, or let's just bring it right back to in a more very recent video where I'm talking about tyranny starting at home and youth. We have that example all the way to the world stage. Just have to go against everything that really sits with you emotionally. To detach from it all, step back and look around. It's hard. Now, you could, for many people, for example, you could break away from it and go, wow, but then you just slip right back in. And then we have the addiction part because the addiction to whatever it is will bring you back in. The emotional content may bring you back in. Peer pressure may, pre may bring you back in. Social conditioning can bring you back in. It takes a very strong character just to say enough. To stop and look around. Look around at your own personal actions. This begins in each person, each person's personal life. Each person, you, may not be able to stop something on the world stage. But keep in mind the world stage is comprised of individuals. This is not stating or implying by no means that there's some sort of great revolution or anything else. It's simply saying, stop, look, and realize what's going on. The game can only be played as long as all the pieces on the board are moving. Once that happens, when they stop, well, the game can't be played anymore. How many times throughout history through great resets, and I've talked about the cycles of civilization and the literal 100-year patterns within, how many times has the human species had to endure all this? And yes, there is something much bigger behind all this. And that's something perhaps I'll just let you figure out for yourself at this time. Just things to think about. Anyway, thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share.
Listen to this and write it down if you can't remember it. You're never going to outgrow warfare. You simply must learn to fight. I hear people saying to me, oh, when is it going to get easier? When you die. 